timing and composition are the two important elements in shooting a fight photo. You, you, if it's a striking match, which Muay Thai is, you have to time the strikes and the kicks. And that comes from years of experience and watching the giveaways and the shoulders and the movement uh, and knowing fights and how those, the strikes are thrown. Composition is another thing uh, that is simply chance. You don't get to pose fighters. You don't get to tell the referee where to stand. And sometimes your best photos are blown by a referee's butt in the middle of the picture and blocking something. So uh, you have to watch people circle one another and try to get the best photos when they are side by, you know, facing one another and you're shooting them on the edge. When you're shooting one person standing in front of the other, not a good composition because you've got a blockage and you can't see what's going on. Uh, so it's composition, waiting for the right thing to happen, waiting for the positioning and timing the strikes when they take place. Those are the two things that I believe in. The, the, rest, the rest of making a good photo to me comes in the crop. When you're done, crop out extra stuff that's unnecessary, my style. Cut out the ceiling, cut out the, the width on the sides, and I either use the whole body from feet to head, or I crop above the knee, or around the thighs to the head. Uh, with every low venue uh, that you're going to shoot, you have to uh, understand their lighting system. Uh, it's not so much the, the build of the arena, but you have to know your rings and your cages and you have to know the lighting colors and the brightness of the lights. Some places I shoot are operating by can lights in the ceiling. Some places they use red and blue lights together and give you a magenta photo. So uh, you, you, you color balance your light, your, to, your, to your lighting the best you can. Uh, and then you want to understand uh, if, if you get to work the same cage or the same ring over and over, you learn your sweet spots and your favorite spots where you want to put yourself around the, the ring or the cage. Uh, one of the things that you have to learn from experience about shooting ringside uh, is you have to have a, a ringside etiquette. Uh, you are shoulder to shoulder with the judges and the timekeeper and the people you see on TV all of your life. And you have to know to be quiet, to not get in the way. You're the bottom man on the totem pole when you're shooting a fight because you've got state athletic commissions around you and people that are far more important than you. Uh, the, the other thing, one, one of the tricks uh, in shooting a cage for me is I get it as close to the wire as I can uh, and that allows you to focus the wire out of the photo and uh, it makes you look like you're inside the cage with them. So I don't even like to be eight inches back from the wire. I like to have my lens as close to the wire as possible and there is where you have to be careful because if you don't get out of the way in time or something happens, if you're on a ring and a, and a foot sweeps by and, and hits your camera or something, the athletic commission will remember you for that and you are poison. So you have to behave and you have to stay out of the way. And uh, I'm, I can attest to the fact that for 10 years they let me get right up there and do that and no trouble. So uh, just understand the etiquette of being around a cage and around where the important thing is happening. There are times where I hear the decision before it's been announced. I don't go to Twitter. <laughs> I, stay, I stay off of social media. You have to understand you're part of the provider and you have to let the consumer have their show and not upset the machine. Please like, 